Hi everyone, welcome to another Anypoint Code Builder short video. My name is Alex Martinez, I am a developer advocate at MuleSoft, and today we are going to see a preview of the new Dataweave Expression Builder. All right, so first we have a very basic flow. It's literally just a set payload component that is inside this flow, nothing else. So if we click on it, you will first see that we have a new input output tab right here. This is showing all of our metadata, which is very useful in case you want to see what is available for you for the input or what is going to come out from this component on the output. For example, here, the payload, we can see here that is going to be a string because that is what we have here in the general tab. Now, that is not the deal with expression builder. You can open it by clicking here on the FX button. And then once you click inside here, you will see this new window that is opening. This is the deal with expression builder. You can see here from the data that all of the input metadata is available here for you. You can also minimize this if this is you want to see the canvas and you can maximize it again by clicking on this button. You can also notice that the title of this window is general value. That means that this is in the general section right here and the name of the input text is value, which is right here. So because this flow is very simple, very basic, we don't have a lot of information right now just the default data that would come from a mule message, which is the payload attributes and variables. So here, for example, in this flow, we have way more things. This is a flow that was scaffolded from an API specification. So in this case, we have the HTTP listener, we have a set payload, and then we have the API key router. Let's click on the set payload that is right here. And if we see the input output tab, we will be able to see that now we have way more attributes that are coming in the input from the HTTP listener. So if we go to the general tab and open the data group expression builder, we will also be able to see all of these attributes being listed right here. You will also be able to see if these are strings, if they are numbers, if they are objects and so on. So now let's go to one of the flows. In this case, this is inside a gate slash items. So let's open the set payload and let's see what we have here inside the deal with expression builder. So from my API specification, I had defined a query parameter that is called name. So if I search for name, I will be able to see that indeed I have here this query parameter called name, which is a string. Now, if I click on it, I will be able to see these being added automatically to my input text box instead of me having to remember all of the syntax of attributes.querparams.name. Now let's head to a different flow. In this case is the resource slash items slash ID, which is a URI parameter. So let's open the deal with expression builder. And first of all, I am going to write the ID is and then leave a space. So now I want to concatenate the actual ID that will come from the URI parameter here. So for that, let's say that I do not know how to concatenate data with. I can go here to functions and search for every single function that is available in data with. For example, I can search for concat and I have one plus plus function and a concat with. But this concat with comes from the binaries module. So maybe that's not what I'm expecting. So here says that it concatenates two values, but I can also click on the details. So I can actually read more description and see some parameters and examples on how to use this function. Now that I'm sure that this is the function that I want to use, I can either click here on add and this will add it, or I can simply click on it from here. So as soon as I click on it, this will be added right here. And then I want to be able to add my URI parameter. So for that, if I go back to the data and search for ID, I will be able to see here that I have a URI parameter called ID. So if I click on it, this will automatically be added as attributes.uriparams.id. Pretty cool, huh? Let's see another example. So let me delete everything. And let's go now to functions and search for a different functions. Let me search for camelize. And I'm going to click on it and add it directly. So I need to write something here. Let's add, for example, hello underscore world. But right after I finish writing, I see that I have here an error. 
So if I click on this part, I can see that this is unable to resolve reference of Camelize. That is because Camelize comes from the strings module and I am not importing that module here. So it is very easy to fix. I can simply click on import Camelize and this will automatically add and import this module for me. So now that everything is ready from here, let's see finally what is a preview button for. As you may have guessed it, you will be able to see a preview of the code that we have right here. In my case, I'm trying to camelize the hello underscore world, and this would be my preview, which is hello, and then capital W, and then the rest of the word.